Let us now have a look at the data sheet for the Peltier element. I will download the data sheet of the Peltier element that I showed you recently and then we shall see what information that we can gain from the data sheet and what are the parameters that we need to look for in order to design the Peltier, select the Peltier element for a particular application. I have downloaded the data sheet for the uh, Peltier element that I showed you, Layer Technologies. This is the element that, uh, a similar type of an element that we uh, saw. Uh, it's the same number. You see, there is a list of applications. Interesting to note that it can be used for medical lasers, lab science instrumentation, clinical diagnostics, photonics laser, electronic enclosure cool cooling, even component cooling, food and beverage cooling, chillers. Anyway, let us come to the important thing. There is this set of performance specification. These are some important numbers and let us try to understand these numbers. Here I will draw a schematic and then try to associate these numbers with the schematic. So let us say that I put the hot junction part in the red there and then the cold junction part here and we have a pump, the Peltier pump which extracts heat energy from the cold junction, pushes, pushes it through the pump into the hot junction and for that there needs to be some external power input and that is what is coming as an electric electrical power into the Peltier element. Now let us say QC. QC is the amount of heat that is extracted from the cold junction. This is the heat flow out of the cold junction. Q max in watts. 25.7 watts, 30.4 watts, depending upon what is the hot side temperature. This indicates the maximum heat flow that can be allowed for this Peltier element. So the QC that you are going to, the heat that you are going to remove from this cold junction and pass it on out is 25.7 to 30.4 watts this is the absolute maximum do not exceed beyond that if you start exceeding beyond that then what happens is the peltier element has within it an internal resistance and the i square law i, I square or loss increases and the uh, uh, amount of heat power flow uh, will uh, decrease and the temperature difference between the hot and cold junction will fall so we are calling here this as the cold junction and it is at temperature T1. We are calling this as the hot junction and that is at temperature T2. The difference between T2 and T1 is called delta T. So let's say delta T is equal to T2 minus T1 and that is specified here delta T max. So that is also one of the spe specs. 68 to 75 degrees so the difference between the cold and hot junction uh, should not exceed 68 to 75 degrees that is around the maximum that this particular Peltier junction would allow now this heat pump which I have shown here let me replace that with a square block which represents the Peltier element. It has two electrical leads and uh, I connect an external resistance and a power supply as shown. So there is a voltage across the terminals of the Peltier. We'll call that as VP and there is a current that is flowing into the positive terminal of the Peltier and we will call that one as IP. So uh, this uh, 
um, uh, this electrical circuit this electrical circuit here is providing the electrical energy the external energy for Peltier junction to act as a heat pump so if you consider this IP that is the current flowing into the Peltier it should not exceed I max here as given in this data sheet so the I max current for the Peltier element is 3 amp in this case. The voltage across the terminals of the Peltier VP should not exceed a max as indicated in the data sheet here. V max should not exceed 14.5 to 16.4 depending upon the temperature of the hot junction. Now if you consider this Peltier element, let me erase this and then let me connect a resistance here the internally there is a resi uh, resistance across the terminals of the Peltier and that resistance let me call it as RP the Peltier resistance this is the module resistance as indicated in the data sheet and that is given to be around 0 0.84 to 0.95 depending upon the hot side temperature T2 and this T2, the hot side temperature is, uh, is between 25 degree centigrade and 50 degree centigrade. There is a maximum operating temperature for the Peltier element and that is 80 degree centigrade. It should not uh, on any condition exceed 80 degree centigrade. Otherwise, the Peltier oh. element will not operate properly. So let me go down the data sheet. So on the next page, there are a couple of graphs given and then below there are the dimensional uh, parts of the data that is given. Observe here operating tips, maximum operating temperature 80 degree centigrade. Do not exceed I max or V max when the operating the module. So these are tips and hints which you should observe. Now look at this. these two graphs they are of some importance to us there are two graphs one nomograph is for the thermal another nomograph is for the electric electrical this graph especially is important because it relates to the coefficient of performance you have QC and this is a family of curves with respect to the current that is flowing through the Peltier junction and therefore we can relate to the coefficient of performance. Let me explain with respect to the figure that we just drew. This is the cold junction, this is the hot junction. The hot junction temperature T2 minus the cold junction temperature T1 is delta T. Observe that the x-axis of both these nomographs are delta T, basically the difference in the hot and cold junction temperatures, 0 to 80 degrees. That's what is uh, the graph limits. And you see, you see this graph. Now these are graphs at different values of the currents that is flowing into the Peltier junction. IP is the current that is flowing into the Peltier junction. So this graph is with respect to an IP of 0.6 amps that is flowing. This graph is with respect to IP or IP of 1.2 amps flowing into it. One, for this graph is for 1.9 amps flowing into the Peltier. This graph is for 2.5 amps flowing into the Peltier. And this is for 3 amps flowing into the Peltier. And this Peltier is rated up to a max of 3 amps only. Likewise, even in the electric nomograph, this graph is at uh, 0.6 uh, amps, this is at 1.2 amps, 1.9 amps, 2.5 amps and 3 amps. Observe here that greater delta T is achievable as the amps that flow into the Peltier junction increases. So you can achieve as much as close to uh, 65, 68 degree uh, centigrade when the amps that is flowing into the Peltier is at around 3 amps. In general, the nature of this curve suggests that when the temperature difference is less, I can remove 
greater amount of heat power from the cold junction and shift it to the hot junction. So more amount of power can be removed from the cold junction if the temperature difference is maintained small. If you want a large temperature difference then you, you can only pump uh, less amount of uh, heat power uh, uh, into the uh, hot uh, junction. Take for example if I have to pump 17 watts of power out of the cold junction then 17 comes somewhere here and then it cuts these three lines the uh, uh, 1.9 amp line 2.5 amp line and the 3 amp line one of these can be used so you could probably apply around 13 volts 3 amps you will have the operating point here you could probably uh, apply around 10 uh, 10 volts uh, 2.5 amps and probably have the operating point around here so um, uh, more the power uh, more the qc that uh, heat power that you want to remove from the cold junction higher must also be the power that you have to pump into the peltier element in order to pump that quantity of heat into the hot junction if you multiply vp and ip vp into ip will give you the power that you are pumping into the uh, peltier element qc plus vp into ip will be the amount of heat power that you are putting into the hot junction.